Yeah, so like I was, I thought the book was pretty interesting because I didn't realize Luke was a Jedi before this one. Uh, kind of weird how long you spent staring at the uh, beautiful woman on the cover art, though. I don't know. Like when you told me that, I was a little surprised. Well, it I only have the ebook form, so <laughs> I can imagine whatever I wanted on the cover. <laughs> but I have to reread the book, I think, because like I I kept thinking that they were saying brackish, like. The Shadow Academy was run by a cup Gross of water. kind of salt, salty water. Yeah. <laughs> so I was confused the whole time. So we're going to need... Oh, shit. Oh, we're live. Oh, okay. Mm. Click on. Always sneaks up on us. Yeah. I don't know. Is it... I'm the one that presses the button too. So it's <laughs> it's shocking how that keeps happening. Yeah. Yes, it is. Hello. Hey, don't start. <laughs> Do not start, Remy. We just started recording. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Look, I, that's a weird way to introduce our new co-host. Ray will never be co-host. She doesn't have the the determination to read a book every week, <laughs> and she's a dog. All right. Well, hello there, and welcome to Tap Calf Transmissions, the only Star Wars podcast. Is that still true? Have we verified that independently? No, but I think. We'll be able to verify it the same week that I get the uh, spreadsheet done for the book ranking. Okay, that's good. Well, you have like up to 13 episodes to do that. So I know. And then we need to rank all these together. But I am, as always, your host, Corey. And joining me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Mm-hmm. Eckhart's Effervescent Ladder. You hated it last time I used that word, so I'm going to use it again. I don't think I hated it. I think it was just a big word, which naturally I don't like. Intimidates you, yeah. Intimidates, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there you go, though. How have you been, Justin, since good, our last good. episode? Busy. Because um, we don't talk off off the podcast, so we have no, no idea. I mean, we don't like each other, so. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. a Mythbusters situation, right? Where, yes. uh, Except without the grudging respect. Yeah, where <laughs> I'm fun and get excited about things and you're a mm-hmm. curmudgeon with a weird mustache yeah yeah i'm curious do you have a dos- audacity open right now yeah because how much disk space in the bottom corner does it say you could record for for me we could go 272 hours for this podcast but after that um who uh a break so i can switch hard drives mine says nine hours and 20 and seven minutes i think that's uh going off of c so is that your SSD? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I need another SSD so I can use that for like installing games too cuz yeah. My C drive is very full and the only game I have on it is Empire at War, but even then it just it's so full. It Anyways. Must, must be a pretty small C drive, is it? Or a pretty small SSD? Yeah, it's like I think I bought like a yeah, 512. So it's It's not that bad. Hmm. But I, I have the uh, SSD podcast is off to a good start. A different type of SSD than normal. Yeah, that time. would be the courtship and Iron Fist episodes. <laughs> We've already done those on the show, but uh, today we are talking. Wow, what a what a segue! Thank you. Mm-hmm. Today welcome. we're talking about the second Young Jedi Knights book, uh, Dark Saber. I mean, the Shadow Academy. Uh, <laughs> we were going to yeah, be talking about yeah, about yeah. Dark Saber this week, but uh, we've decided instead. It, we didn't. This was after last episode, right? That we decided this. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm sorry for anyone who prepped and didn't uh, didn't have time to read. Apologies for that. But yeah, we, we 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 and I think especially me because I got the the baby coming up are just very very busy right now. Um, so these books are much more manageable and they're fun. And I don't want to read Dark Saber, <laughs> <laughs> or and I really don't want to read Planet of Twilight. Okay, so you started off with the legitimate, understandable reasons, and then went into <laughs> the real reasons that we're not supposed to say. <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> I'm I'm actually kind of looking forward to Dark Saber. Dark Saber. It's too long, fun. but I. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not necessarily that it's too long. It's that it's too long at a period when we are trying to schedule reading the whole book between all the other stuff yes. we have to do for work. But, Especially where right now it's we got squadrons and we're down to one one week for episode prep. I just know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to sit down after streaming and doing a video. It'll be like three o'clock in the morning. Be on my couch, turn on my Kindle, get five pages, and just fall asleep. And then I'll look the next day, and I'll be 1% done the book, and I'll just yeah. be miserable. 
That's when you just end up reading the Wikipedia article. I haven't had to do that yet. But you haven't? Okay, I thought you might have done it at least really? once. No, I, I don't mean there. I don't mean there was like a specific episode that I was like, hmm, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but I, I thought like just retrospectively, maybe there was one that you had read recently enough that you were just like, uh, I'm not going to bother with this. Oh yeah, no, I got you. Because I haven't had it. I haven't done that yet. But I figure if we did uh, like Dark Tide or something in the near future, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't read it all the way through because I've done mm-hmm. my Vong stuff so recently now or like up yes. to uh, star by star now. But yeah, for me, if I had had to, uh, if I had had to read the, like if I had read Bane off air or not for the podcast and we were covering it now randomly because of overwhelming fan request or something, I wouldn't be reading it again. Mm. <laughs> Um, I, I have done a couple of books where usually I will read the book and also listen to the audiobook if it's available. But for like some books, like the entire Thrawn trilogy, I've read so many times. I just listen to the audiobook. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. But even though we're not doing Dark Saber, it's still the same author. So we're getting our fix yeah. of Kevin J. Anderson. Uh, only now with the help of his wife, Rebecca Melista. Yes. So and we get um, invulnerable starships and lots of other fun stuff. Um. That we could expect from a Kevin J. Anderson book. Or not invulnerable starships, but uh, what, what do they call it again? The uh, the hull that the uh, land the shadow is... chaser, or no, uh, the Kreska gem, uh, yeah, reinforced luminium stuff. Yeah, well, whatever it is, they, they, it's the uh, quantum armored hull, yeah, like the Sun Crusher. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. Um, and there was kind of some other tie-ins with Jedi Academy too. Unsurprisingly, there was the same hull as the Sun Crusher. Um, didn't the student that turned evil, um, on Luke's, at Luke's Jedi Academy yeah. use a Corsica gem in his lightsaber? Uh, yes. I think, was Brachus always, was it Brachus? No, no, it was the one that, like, caught fire. Oh, <laughs> oh, Gantorus. Gantorus, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Gantorus. He, like, I don't know if that was, he uh. Makes his, he makes his own lightsaber using, I thought it was a Corsica gem, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, that could be right. Mm-hmm. I know. I thought like, doesn't Jason end up using the one that he gets in this book to make his lightsaber, or does he actually give remember. it? He might give it to Leia. I thought the twins used Karaska gems, but it's been so long since I read the other. I wouldn't ones. be surprised. I mean, Jason still has his, doesn't he? I think he might actually end up giving that to Leia because mm-hmm. that's he says he's gonna use it as a Mother's Day gift, and Lando's like really showing up on there, kid. Let's uh, let's pump <laughs> the brakes on that play. one. Yeah, you know you could buy your Jedi powers for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Have we covered the midi chlorian transplant procedure yet? <laughs> Very expensive. Would Very that work? Expensive. That seems like we should put some people on they that. They try that, and uh, I think that's something that Plagueis talks about trying mm. unsuccessfully. Um, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I've drank that's the bad. blood of so many young Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just into it now. It doesn't help. I'm just into it. <laughs> So shall we give a basic overview of what's going on in this pleasant book? Uh, yeah, so the book kind of opens up with... Uh, there. There's two main plots to the book where the first one is the plot around Jaina, Jason, and Loey, where mm-hmm. they go off gallivanting. That's my word of the day. I need to use it a couple mm-hmm. more times. Uh, gallivanting to Lando's Karuska Gem mining facility on Yavin, which is convenient. He's right there. Um mm-hmm. And these are incredibly valuable, incredibly hard, super diamonds, essentially. Uh, Mm -hmm. And while they're there, though, they get kidnapped by Brachus's forces for the Shadow Academy, an evil academy run Mm -hmm. by the Empire uh, Mm -hmm. to basically... I'm stumbling over this because right now I'm just picturing Mark from the Templin Institute saying, (laughs) gentlemen, too evil. (laughs) But... Uh, uh, yeah, they're basically trying to make new a new dark Jedi for the Empire. Yeah, they kind of reference how Luke is making Jedi because he sees like a new Jedi Order because he saw them as kind of the glue that held together the Republic even during its most chaotic times. So now that the Empire is fractured, uh, this the Second Imperium thinks that a new kind of cadre of dark Jedi will help keep the Empire together. 
And yeah. that's kind of what they're, they've already got some students going. Um, there's Brackus has a dark master who we don't learn the identity of. If I remember correctly, I'm it's, pretty sure uh, it's a Palpatine impersonator. Yeah, it's actually like four royal guards in a Palpatine suit. Really? It's like, it's like uh, when kids in uh, in movies, like especially Little Rascals, sneak mm-hmm. into a movie theater where it's just like on each other's shoulders. It's basically that, but royal guards. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that's what that was. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert for the next couple books, I think. But yeah, because I remember I had a cover as a kid with Palpatine on it, and I was like, "Oh my god!" But yeah, it's not actually Palpatine. He hasn't come back again, uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, no. I'm just joking. That would have been that would have been a bit much. Let's talk about the Second Imperium, though, because so this. Well, book there's in- another part of the book we didn't cover. Tanelka and Luke have to rescue them. Oh yes, yes. And we learn about more Tanelka, who didn't get much exposure in the first book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Luke takes her drinking despite the fact that she's like twelve. Yes. <laughs> so the Second Imperium is like it's kind of unclear, and, and it's a bit weird because this book is written before. Like a lot of like, because this book just take, takes place in twenty three ABY, but it was written before like the Thrawn duology, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I like I don't even think it explicitly says that the New Republic's at peace with the Empire, although at this point they would have been. Um, the Empire's not in the core in twenty three ABY. They've moved to the Outer Rim. Well, there's um, still a couple of the Deep Core replacement warlords, and yeah. That, but, well, I think it's more like the replacement replacement warlords at this point. Yeah. But, yeah. The Empire has largely moved to the Outer Rim. They're pretty peaceful with the New Republic at this point. Um, so you kind of got to imagine the Second Imperium, I think, as kind of like a, a splinter movement rather than the Empire proper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, everything at this point is just like small warlord forces. Uh, this is why the Second Imperium, no matter how many people ask, is not a playable faction in Throne's Revenge because uh, mm-hmm. they would have no territory. Except for the Shadow Academy and like one planet, maybe one space station and a few uh, blast boats. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Empire really not not in good shape anymore. Uh, well, I like Pelion's area is doing okay. The leftover Penistar alignment stuff that he's mm-hmm. uh, kind of taken over, but the New Republic kind of does whatever it wants. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And again, this book was written in 95, so pretty early on compared to when most of that era would be fleshed out, um, which is probably why we don't get a whole lot of discussion about kind of the greater galaxy, at least not yet. Um, I think the, the series goes for a few years, though, so I'll be curious to see if the later books change that at all. Yeah, but, is it? Uh, is this in 23 or is it like 21 ABY? How old are they? I think are they eleven? Twelve? Yeah, it's just, it's just twenty three ABY. So they'd be aren't they weren't they born nine Eight. ABY? Eight or nine Eight. ABY. Yeah, well so no, like, Thrawn and Thrawn is nine. Thrawn is nine, yeah. Yeah, so they're like fourteen years old, basically. Yeah. Well these on Vong War starts when they're like sixteen, so it's yeah. really only two years between now and when they get mentally fucked up for life. So yeah. So enjoy the golden age while we're in it. Yeah. <laughs> The Golden Age being taken to a giant torture wheel and uh, forced to fight your own brother, but still better than what's coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all downhill from here for them, believe it or not. Yeah. Especially Anakin, who is uh, 12 right now and dies when he's like 14, 15. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, good time. Good time to be a solo kid. And Anakin right now is having his own adventures in Junior Jedi Knights, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. Those books are even shorter. Um those are even more kind of kid books, I think. Yeah, I've never actually read Junior Jedi Knights. I had a couple of them as a kid. Like, they're very, very small. Like, mm-hmm. I remember them being significantly smaller than Young Jedi Knights. But How many of them are there? Do you know offhand? Uh, like, less. I think there's like six, maybe. So that might even be something we just read them all at once and then do one episode on yeah, Junior maybe, Jedi Knights. Or like maybe two episodes. Because um, yeah. like, I, I still think they're they're decent size but they're not like well these i've been reading in like 45 minutes so really not yeah. not a huge amount that there is to to chew on there one thing i've enjoyed about the shorter length is that i haven't had to do any skimming um mm-hmm. usually just because of how busy we are and 
you know, a week is a lot to read a book if you've got a lot of time. But for us, at least me, I think you too, like we're pretty busy. So usually there's bits that I'm skimming or lightly reading. But with these, I've been able to pay attention and like read every single Yeah, page. this is a lot more on your level. Yes. <laughs> I like how they don't use big words. <laughs> I've never, you don't hear Luke saying effervescent in uh, Young Jedi Knights. Uh, the word irresistible is on this page that I just turned to. So that's a pretty big Ooh. word. That's pretty pretty nasty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, do you have any thoughts first on Lando's mining facility and the events therein? You mentioned the the quantum armor being uh, mm. one of my least favorite things in Star Wars, at least. Like the impenetrable, nothing can destroy it, sun crusher yeah. bullshit. I enjoyed it. Like I thought it was a fun kind of setup. It's just like like Luke and the Solo kids are just so privileged, though. Yeah. Like, what are we doing for a day? We're going to visit Uncle Lando's diamond mine. Oh, we found a diamond worth a bajillion dollars. We get to keep this, and we... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not rich Um, now. Guess we're still just as rich as ever, but now slightly more rich. Yeah. I mean, Lando's got a lot of... uh, He's always got some sort of mine on the go, because in a couple of years, he'll have the... uh, is it Destrillion where he's got the asteroid mine at Vector Prime or wherever it is? Dubrillion. Dubri- Dubrillion. I mean, um, he's got the asteroid mine. But and then. What's the difference, really? Yeah, he's always got lots of uh, business endeavors on the go. Mm-hmm. So this this is very fitting. I thought it was cool taking a journey into, uh, into the heart of Yavin Prime. I thought it was kind of a nice throwback to um, the Jedi Academy series. Yeah. And it really does highlight just how poor of an idea the uh, uh, the Sun Crusher being sent into the planet was, because clearly yeah. you can retrieve it if you really want to. Yeah. I mean, I do like the continuity there. Like, I like the idea that Lando probably saw that and was like, okay, like, if, if they can do that, I can probably send something in and uh, mm-hmm. retrieve something. I do like how Lando was like, he was pretending to be all cool about going in. It's like, oh, yeah, we do this every day. But really, most of the time, he's got his... Uh, He's got his adventurers doing it for him, and he's just sitting back making money. <laughs> yeah. So I was actually thinking when that happened, uh, if this was if you were just one of the workers they are responsible for actually making sure shit works, and then the boss just comes in, he usually doesn't do the job and probably doesn't have the best idea how it's done. Not only him, but he brings in these little <laughs> these little brats. He's like, "Yeah, we're just gonna go do it." See, that's the kind of thing that would piss me off if back when I was working, like, uh, pretty much any other job where just stop. No, no, no bosses (laughs) should ever do this. You're you're 100 percent right. Um, But I don't know what to tell you. Lando does what Lando wants. He pays for it all. He's like the boss and the owner. Kind of wondering where Tendra is, though, because she should be around, but. He's probably out doing something. Yeah. Uh, well, this is long after Lando and Mara are uh, undercover. Mm-hmm. So that, that's a that's a really fun part of uh, of the Corellian trilogy. Luke and Lando's. The, oh yeah, like when he meets the vampire and stuff. Yeah, gallivanting yeah. around for for Trying a wife for Lando, Lando. Wade, basically. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't I think? Uh, Mon Mothma even tells Luke to go along with it. Like, Mon Mothma calls Luke in, is like, hey, you're going to get a request from Lando, and I think it's a good idea that you do this. (laughs) He swiped right on some nasty women, Luke. We need your help. The New Republic needs your help. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm pretty sure, like, so, like, the Corellian trilogy comes out, or the first book came out in 95 as well. So, I mean... I can't remember. I think Tendra and Lando get married in book three, maybe. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think she shows up in the in the first. She's book, definitely in then, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So we we could we could see her in the future, maybe. Maybe that would be fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One of the least prominent Star Wars characters that's most connected to the main character. She's always mentioned yeah. as being around. But mm-hmm. she's almost never in the room. <laughs> I mean, Lando Jr. even, like, he gets shafted even more. Like, you hear very little about Lando Jr. other than Lando's got a kid. Even though Tendra's, like, in her 50s or 60s when she has him. 
How, uh, wait, is he born in the new Zon, the new Zon Vong War? I think he's born in Legacy, but I, is I he? can't remember for sure. Okay, so that, I'm, that I'm not makes a bit more sense, because then he wouldn't be... Because for him, I'm, I'm never sure what his age is, because he always mm. seemed like he would be kind of the same age as, like, at least Alana, but Alana's, like decently active with like the Millennium Falcon book and stuff. Oh yeah. Forty one. Oh he was born, born in forty one? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. slightly younger than really late. Really late. Yeah. Yeah. So Tendra would be almost seventy, I think, at that point. Yeah. So like the reality of the situation is Lando is off doing whatever the hell he wants and the reasons their business actually becomes successful around that point is because Tendra's doing everything. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yeah. Lando He's contributes also rich nothing. Too. Yeah. Yeah, she's also rich. So. Like, Tendra is that old, but she is younger than Lando, but, like, Han, Lando, and Leia, by the last books, are closing in on... Yeah. What, they're... I guess 44, they'd be 60, they'd be about 70. So, I think she's only, like, 50 by the end. So, yeah, she's having Lando Jr. at, like, 50 uh yeah around there i mean well so w- when does fate of the jedi start what year does fate of the jedi start fate of the jedi i think is like 44 44 yeah. to 45 so 44 plus 18 so that's like what 62 or or yeah 62 mm-hmm. that's leia's age and then you add like another what 13 or 14 on there for for han and lando uh, han and lando yeah yeah, they're they're not young. And Pelion, when he gets killed by Tahiri, he's like he's in, in his nineties. Like nineties, yeah. Almost a hundred. Yeah. If not a hundred. So I mean if Tahiri didn't get him. <laughs> it wasn't me, I swear. I was on the bridge and he just <laughs> He said he, Oh my lungs and just died. <laughs> yeah, like Akbar and Mon Mothma die at what sixty or seventy each? I don't think we know when Mon Mothma dies, do we? Yeah, because, well, she dies off screen between uh, the Corellian trilogy, and she's definitely dead by the start of the Yuuzhan Vong War. I can't remember if she's mentioned as being alive or dead in uh, Thrawn, Hand of Thrawn, but... Hmm. Does it, I didn't know that... See, that's interesting. I didn't know that Mon Mothma was ever explicitly said to die. But Yeah, yeah she's she dead. She is like 100% dead. And yeah, usually it's explained old, as but... the... Uh, the wasting disease from Jedi Academy right. kind of taking yeah. a lot out of her and then she fully retires and like still is working in the background trying to get Lando late, of course, because obviously, yeah, uh, of course. but she doesn't take an active role again and she's dead by the Yuuzhan Vong War. Then Akbar least... was a fish out of water, so that didn't <laughs> go well for him. Uh, all I mean, of his Akbar caviar. Must been... Akbar must have been a little bit older, though. Because... He dies at like 70 years old. He's not very old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Mon Mothma, did they transfer her consciousness into the new Star Destroyer they named after her? Uh, you know... If not, not interested. You know the Yuuzhan Vong uh, protector droid that uh, Lando builds for... <laughs> yeah. For Ben? That's actually uh, got Mon Mothma's consciousness in it? Is that so it can hang it with Winter? Ooh, that would be Akbar's consciousness then? That I like oh, that oh, theory. Oh, you said that's... Okay, yeah, I thought that's what you were saying. No, I'm. I'm let's go with Akbar. That makes more sense. Yeah. Mon Mothma just got transformed into a shower curtain or something or a bathrobe. Because she's always just wearing that one sheet. <laughs> like, Mon Mothma, at least wear a different colored sheet today, please. <laughs> no. Let's see. Can I find her death date? I'm pretty sure she's explicitly dead during the... During yeah, the... I just, I just opened it. It says 24, so... Yeah. So yeah, she's she's seventy two. So so old, but not Star Wars old. Yeah, like the Captisins are looking at her like, come on, you're just graduating high school by the current standards. Pretty embarrassing. <laughs> of course, Gariel dies at like forty. Yeah, but anyways, we are talking about the Shadow yeah, Academy too. Yeah, well, he was like thirty years older as well. Yeah. Thanos, because he was he was decently old during Truce of Bakura, and mm-hmm. then uh, she runs off with him, and much to Luke's dismay, yeah. despite showing 
almost no interest in him. Yeah. A real shock. Way it goes. Luke don't got good luck with the ladies. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> that that handles the Karuska gem situation. Jason gets one. <laughs> he is richer than ever before, uh, yep. gets kidnapped, and we end up at the Shadow Academy where mm. the twins continue being demanding and spoiled for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we get Brackus as well. Um, he's Apparently not character. a cup of water, much to my yeah. surprise. And then he will also appear in the new Rebellion, which is a dreadfully, dreadfully boring um, Phantom Era book set quite a few years earlier about a bombing of uh, the New Republic Senate that, of course, Han Solo gets blamed for. Have you read that then? Because that was the Uh, one a few months ago that we were talking about that I started reading and then I stopped when I decided I'd rather read the Yuzon Vong War. Yeah, so something very similar happened to me. I started reading it. It's pretty long for how shitty it is. So I just listened to the audiobook. Mm, fair enough. And yeah. Like I uh, tried so hard. I, that is one that I'm really struggling with. Yeah, but... I mean, it was it was cool to have Brackus in there. Like it's a nice little bit of kind of cross continuity, especially where it is a few years earlier. And he's kind of less overtly evil, but it's also pretty shitty. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Brachus lets us know that actually he is going to explode if he fails with this. And we see some training, uh, between Jason and Jaina and Loey yeah. with Brachus and Tamith Kai, who's helping Brachus with this. Cause a lot of the Night Sisters get involved in, uh, setting up this Imperial training camp. Mm-hmm. But there are some weird bodies. things. There's some weird things with the lessons that, uh, I don't know if there's like direct explanations for or if it's just kind of like assume something happened to explain it. Uh, but the the big one for me is that at some point, uh, Jaina and Jason are kind of pit against each other mm-hmm. to train with their lightsabers. And the whole thing, they're all like they're always like fighting holograms and stuff. And Brack is like, maybe I'll throw in a real creature. So you don't know if you have to defend yourself or not. Uh, but. In general, you'd think they'd be able to sense a living entity yeah. being around them, especially when it's each other. Yeah, that part was a little weird. I guess I just I just kind of chalked that up to all right. They're they're really young still, and they're under a lot of stress. But yeah, that's especially like how the hologram like reacts to things. Like holograms are never really shown that way. Like mm-hmm. usually, you'd cut through it, and it would, um, you know, it, it would shimmer or whatever. But in this case, like Jason's fighting one, and he's like chopping through its uh, its club and stuff. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I did like when they were they were fighting, and then you have Coral, who is the Thai pilot that they saved last time, who starts getting some doubts about yeah. what he's doing. Uh, but he's, he's there for some reason. For some reason, <laughs> he's like it's Brackus, Tamith Kai, and Coral, who is just top three. He's apparently the a Thai pilot, head technician, teacher, and various other roles. Uh, but he does... I, I don't really have a problem with him being there because he does help them get out. And it, it's nice to have that connection. Uh, just see the guy like mm-hmm. struggling with, oh, is this actually what I should be doing? But the... Uh, I like the idea that the Shadow Academy has like 10 people there. So it's like, yeah, the... Uh... The shuttle pilot is also like the backup training instructor. (laughs) (laughs) Janitor, like he's mopping the floors when Jason's running by to rescue Jaina and Loey. But Mm -hmm. uh, the core, when Jason and Jaina are fighting, Coral's like, hey, maybe, maybe they shouldn't kill each other. And Brack is like, nonsense. We only need the single strongest student. (laughs) That's always the problem with these dark Jedi trainers. Like, yeah. Maybe Jason ends up being better than Jaina, or Jaina ends up being better than Jason. But the other one is still probably your second best student. Yeah. You don't need just one. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... Only the Jedi seem to get that. <laughs> but I, I also... I like the idea also of, like, Lobok as a Wookiee. So he's kind of naturally... 
kind of subject to these Wookiee fits of rage. So it's like how much of that is like falling to the dark side. Like there's one instance where Brachus knocks out Jaina, pretty horrifying moment. And uh, Loey kind of goes goes mental and like starts throwing benches at people and stuff. So I kind of like how the individual students are, you know, they kind of all have their... Like, I, I like how Lobaka gets extra attention in this book, even more so, I'd say, than either Jaina or Jason individually. Certain, yeah. Certainly more than Jaina. Tenelka and Lobaka both get a lot more attention than they did in the last one, which is nice. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah. I do also like that Loey's, like, defining characteristic is more the, like, tech whiz rather than big, strong Wookiee. And if anyone gets mm-hmm. defined as kind of like the big, strong character, it's Tenelka. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Um, and I, I also did enjoy visiting Dathomir again. I thought that was pretty cool, um, especially how there are so many references to mm-hmm. what happened in courtship. We meet what's her name, uh, Gwendolyn Gwazine. or Gwazine yeah, Kai? G- yeah, what, the old great grandma. Oh, Ogwin. 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 Yeah, who's somehow still kicking around. <laughs> I enjoyed that, and I liked seeing like the tribes and stuff. That was cool. I liked going to that planet beforehand where they're in a bar and like that'll call almost drinks an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> looks like, yeah, don't do that. So she throws it on what she thinks is a plant, but it's actually a living. Sentient yeah. Being. <laughs> and she's like rubbing the leaf. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> You'd think it would say something at that point. It's kind of into it. Mm, like this is like the, that. yeah, I don't like that either, but this is like the second book in a row in the series where because it also mentions in the last book how there's a like plant jedi at luke's academy like mm-hmm. it's like c- certain jedi were sunning themselves right now the the uh the plant jedi <laughs> which i thought was fun yeah the the best part of that arc to me so like luke and tenelka are going to try to track down the uh, the Shadow Academy find Jason, Jaina, and Lobaka, and uh, the break in at the Kruska Gem Mining Facility is done by like this uh, kind of. It's almost like the mole miners in the Thrawn trilogy, but the teeth yeah. are made of Kruska gems. So they're basically mm-hmm. looking for who bought most of Lando's previous Kruska gems, mm-hmm. and like the Empire clearly invests a lot in getting these three because those yeah. are expensive as shit. But, it's like a diamond-tipped blade, which is like yeah. an actual thing. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a middleman reseller kind of situation that bought them and sold them back to the Empire. So Luke is trying to find them. And apparently with this uh, reseller, this contact who is like all about secrecy, all it takes <laughs> is Luke saying, hey, who, sold, who did you sell the other ones to? Because I don't want mine stolen. Which is, there's some logic there that I don't really... Yeah. There's a jump there that doesn't make much sense. Yeah. And the guy's just immediately like, you know what? You've got a good point. Let me divulge all of this information to you yeah, right he's like, now. Uh spooky women. And Tanaka's like, Night Sisters. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Yeah. It, it is funny, Alec. We talked about this when we were reading um courtship, just how much that book is referenced moving forward. Like how big of a character Tanaka becomes. Prince is older, is you know, even a pretty big character. He gets decapitated by Jason later on, which is fun. Hmm. Uh, the Hapens become a major faction. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all good fun. I always forget a soldier's death. Yeah, it was like at the end of Legacy. I don't remember why Jason kills him. I think to force the Hapen fleet into action or something. Jason's a shithead. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty deep in the subtext of Legacy of the Force. But if you really pay attention, the message of Jason's being a shithead really does come across. <laughs> Jason is not epic. Oh my god, he's right. <laughs> but I do like how there's uh, like the progression here with Jason's character, uh, how he really wants the lightsaber, and then kind of the next time we see him after the uh, Young Jedi Knight stuff, he is one of the Jedi that's like farthest towards, I never want to turn this thing on. Whereas Anakin is more of the, I want to fight everything. Mm-hmm. And we kind of see the start of where his attitude shifts here. And that's something yeah. that really does stay with him until he starts murdering everyone he comes into contact with. But that's that's later. That's just a little asterisk, really, on the character as a whole. 
<laughs> well, the the progression for like why he believes the thing he does, the things he do, mm-hmm. he does, and how that progresses through like the different things he goes through is why I love the character so much. And like it's the same thing with him and Jaina, although Jaina kind of stays a bit more on the same path the whole time. Like yeah. even when she's got her stint with the dark side, uh that's a lot more identifiable with her as a character as she's always been. And it doesn't really shift the same way. Like you can see some of mm-hmm. that in Young Jedi Knights, even when she's like threatening people. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, that's a that's a good point. Um, one thing I want to talk about is the fact that um, Tenel Ka, what's what's the what's the bad lady's name again? Um, uh, Tamith Kai or Guazin? Tamith, uh, Tamitha or Tamith, whatever, whatever Tamith her name Kai. is. Yeah. Um, Tenel Ka just kicks her in the shin, basically, and runs away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's how they escape. So, I mean, there's there's not really, like, a whole lot that goes on. The the, the twins and Loie are all getting their sort of indoctrination. Um, the Chewbacca is translating. Troid gets a memory wipe, basically, and is is fully Imperial, which is, is pretty funny. But as... as they, they kind of figure out a way to escape with Jason using the uh, Corsica gem he got earlier to kind of saw his way through the control panel of the door and sort of using, kind of using the force, I guess, to figure out how to open the door. And then mm-hmm. they escape at the same time that uh, Luke is showing up, uh, Luke and Tenelka, and then Jaina kicks somebody in the shins, or sorry, T- Tenelka kicks someone in the shins and breaks their breaks their leg, which is pretty cool. Um <laughs> Quirrell yeah, a... opens the door for them. Yes. Yeah. I will leave that out when I talk to the Brackus and Dan. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was it was kind of a shitty plan. Yeah. If we're being honest. Because getting to the hangar, they had that nailed, but not having the hangar door set to open or anything. Not yeah. great. Luke really loses focus in that situation just so we can recreate that uh, Vader and Obi-Wan Vader, scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Luke even gives the whole "I've sensed a premise or a presence I've not sensed in a long time." Like, yeah, like Luke is usually much better at keeping focus, and mm-hmm. is like, "I pulled up my lightsaber immediately." <laughs> <laughs> then I started swinging. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that I didn't get uh, is we kind of get Brackus's backstory of like how we got to this position, and it fleshes out a bit more that when he's in Jedi Academy, he had been sent by the Empire, actually. Uh, as yeah. a spy to he's basically uh what's that other company called in charlie the chocolate factory can't remember <laughs> but i know who you're talking where about. slugworth yeah where he sends in all these secret spies to get the everlasting gobstoppers and shit Brackus mm. is basically that guy <laughs> and <laughs> apparently luke catches on but uh it's mentioned that Unlike previously previous clumsy yeah. and unpracticed spies who had come to Yavin 4 with the same mission, Brackus has not been expelled outright. But Brackus was part of the first class there. Who was the previous one? Stream? Like, <laughs> yeah. How do we know Brackus is from the first class? Is that something that's... Well, he shows up on the first day of uh, when Luke is gathering all his students, doesn't he? I don't think so. He's not in Jedi Academy Trilogy, is he? Is it Jedi? Oh, well, he's definitely an I Jedi. Is he? Yeah, because him and Cor, he doesn't like Corin. Oh, Corin doesn't yeah, like him. Yeah, he's right. on the transport with. Uh, I remember that now. Is it Corin, Cam, and Brackus that come in together? It's Corin, mm-hmm. someone, and Brackus. Uh, it yeah. might not. It might be missing. It is Cam. It is Cam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, you're right. I, I completely forgot about that. So like that's like the first ten students, really. Like maybe Brackus is a little bit after that, and there's been a couple other ones in there. But mm-hmm. if and Brackus was a huge shithead in I Jedi, so yeah. like if this is if this is what the Empire is really sending their best and brightest, what were the previous spies doing? Were they wearing their Tie Pilot outfits? Do they have like I love Vader pins on? I just love the idea that it's like more of a, a nuisance than anything else. It's like they pose no real threat. It's just like, <laughs> no, we caught you again. Like get back on that transport and go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell Lord Hathrier I say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about Hathrier for a minute there. I'm sorry. 
All in due time. All in due time. But... What else should we talk about for this for this fun book? Did you enjoy this book, Corey? Just yeah. generally without... No, I'm not going fully into, re into reviews or anything, but give me your experience. I, I thoroughly enjoy my experience with the Young Jedi Knight series. Mm -hmm. There's... There's something for the whole family here where mm -hmm. even if I do think Jason and Jaina probably should have been able, been able to sense each other, even mm -hmm. if like Brackus is doing something or Tamith Kai is doing something, but uh, it, that's fine. Yeah, it, It's all fun. I like the introduction of the four new kind of like next generation of characters. This is really one of the first attempts that the books have uh, to have these stories that are centered around new characters other than the X-Wing books, mm -hmm. which were always kind of like standing alone as a good attempt at that. A lot of the mm -hmm. other books up till now have still been like uh, Luke, Han, and Leia. Whereas these are kind of like, we're going to tell, this is where the next set of stories will go. It's these characters, even yeah. though it ends up just being used on Vong War and we never actually get rid of the, <laughs> the old characters. Yeah. But I mean, by the time it's over, you know, Jaina and Jason are both, you know, they're well loved by legends fans as much as, mm -hmm. you know, as much as Luke, like I'd say Jaina is probably, well, either Jaina or Jason's probably the most popular non movie character in the EU. What about Lumpy? Uh, well, he was on screen, so I'm not going to count him. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. So I've never been clear on fan perceptions of Anakin, though. I don't think but, Anakin gets as nearly as much thought because because yeah, he he dead. Yeah, he's dead. He didn't get. He's not really in these books uh, like the other characters. So I, I can't know. remember. Does Anakin show up later on? Uh, yeah, he's he's at because I think the next book. Uh, or the next couple books, they're at home a bit more. Because, mm -hmm. uh, like, Zek shows up, and I can't remember if Zek is someone Isn't they Zek find. Part of the... I'm pretty sure Zek's in the Shadow Academy. I can't remember if they find him at home, and then he gets picked up by the Shadow Academy, and then they oh, rescue him, yeah, or if he starts right. off at the Shadow Academy, and they're like, hey, it's Zek. But one of those I, one of those orders of events happens uh, but Anakin is some of the and some of the scenes at home. I don't know if he ever shows up in any of the scenes at the academy yet, because mm -hmm. I think Young Je or Junior Jedi Knights is set a little bit later, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I like. I've kind of forgotten more of these books than I. I definitely remember a lot more of this book than I did the last one. Um. And just kind of looking through, I know I had like the lightsabers book. Um, and I had the next book as well. Um, but yeah, I, I know that like, t I'm pretty sure like there's like two or three distinct arcs in the series as well. Yeah. And like the first six or like five or six are all, uh, are all kind of young uh, are all shadow Academy. And then there's a, another arc or two afterwards. Mm -hmm. There's the shadow Academy arc, the diversity Alliance arc. Um, there's one other because there's the the versions of the books that are sold where it was like uh, the three or four books from each arc sold together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was looking for those when I was getting the other ones. But uh, oh, well, did you find them? I there was a place I found that had a lot of them, but I was buying literally 60 other Star Wars books at the same time. So uh, I decided not to buy them all. I only bought four of the 14. Mm hmm. But I'm yeah. I'm gonna look again soon. Okay. Interesting. I want to pick them up too, but the, there's a lot. But there are some compilations I know, like you said, like there's yeah. one that has the the whole Shadow Academy arc, which mm -hmm. would be kind of nice to pick up. But I, I I don't think these are sold very regularly. Like I didn't see them new on Amazon, for example. Like no. you can get. Or like I don't know if like chapters has them, for example. Definitely not. I had to. I was looking at like used, uh, used books when I found mm -hmm. them. So I was probably really lucky to find them, and I don't mm -hmm. know if I'll be able to find them even like that again. But I was spending 
too much. Like the books were really cheap, but I was getting them from the states, so I had to pay a good amount in shipping. Uh, it was like yeah. maybe ten cents a book, but then two dollars in shipping per book. Yeah. That's and I found like all the Jedi Prince books. Uh, it it was a pretty good amount that I left on the table there. Funny, I'm looking on uh, chapters since I mentioned it, and although you can't buy, so you can't buy the English books at all. It says not available online, not available in stores. But you can buy ebooks of the German version, which is kind of weird because I couldn't find. E- I don't think ebooks for the English version exist at all. Um, no, I don't think so. Because the ebook I'm reading is is from a, uh, well, from a dark place, <laughs> and I I don't think it's an official book, official ebook. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mine, which is, which is a shame. Mine still have all the things of like the weird transcriptions of. I think it might have been doing someone doing like text to speech even, but I don't know. I mean, See, we're my... all only using official stuff, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for real. We we read it to each other over the phones. That's all he's talking yeah. about. My my first book was like that, but this one I got now is really well done. So maybe I'll, I'll I can send you the link if you want it. Anyway, we're 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 talking about naughty stuff. So let's. Is there anything else you want to talk about this book and anything you want to discuss before we kind of move on to the uh, the closing segment of the show? Uh. Well, what did you think of the book? I think we've covered everything that I want to talk about. What's What are your thoughts on The Young Jedi Knight so far? So I really like this book. I think I like the first one more, although yeah, I, I like I like the Shadow Academy, but the first one is just a little bit more fun. Like Yavin is a really... Uh, Yavin's a really cool uh, planet, and it was cool to get the characters introduced, but I'm looking forward to see what we get with uh, with book three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we will move on to emails and questions right now. Anything that was sent related to Darksaber, I've kind of starred in the email inbox. There was definitely an email from Joel uh, that we will get to when we actually do Darksaber, which we will be getting to Darksaber. Uh, it's just that'll probably be one of the first books that we do once we're back from uh, from yeah. Justin's paternity. Lots of emails, too, I got to say, which was nice. I think we got like 10 emails or 15 emails. Quite quite a few. Uh, Maybe not that many. Actually, I'm looking all the way back to we got October first. We but... got I think four. What? Oh look, yeah, no, I was looking all the way back to October first. Well, there's right. a couple there yeah. that we can't do, but there's there's like five or six here. Yeah, I'm also reading uh, the spam ones, like from TV page, whatever that mm-hmm. is. But uh, you want to read the first one? This TV page ambassador, this session will show you how to leverage <laughs> our new live shopping features to increase your sales and revenue. Well, I've been pretty happy with how sales of our episodes have gone. I don't know about you. Yeah. But, uh, that is a good point, though. At some point, we will probably, because right now we do the podcast completely for free, which is, is, is completely fine. We not, Neither of us mind that, but we might at some point get like an Audible sponsor or something. So. Yeah. That's like one the one that thing that we've sense. talked about where it's like it makes sense for what we're doing yeah. and it helps uh, it helps like us justify the been... time we spend on the podcast. Yeah. Because there have legitimately been times where I've been like, you can get Audible, but I don't have a link to plug. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go in order for this. There is one okay. email that is related to the last full-length novel we did, Children of the Jedi, with a point that I had meant to bring up but forgot to and have been hating myself for forgetting for the last mm-hmm. couple weeks. Um, oh. Where, which one was it? I believe it was from Byron, who says, I was a little late finishing this book. It's not quite as good as I remembered, but it's still great. I put it in B tier. I can't believe with all the talk of Luke being an incel, you never brought up Callista being from the planet of Chad. And <laughs> this was something that I had made a note of and then completely forgot on the episode. So thank you, Byron, for making this point. And I think we lost a lot of opportunities there. I'd feel bad about making all those jokes now that I wanted to make, but I just, I want it to be known. Uh, he also <laughs> says, P.S. I also read Dark Journey. I'm pretty sure Ten O'Clock killed her mom. There we go. But uh, you want to go for the next one? Yeah. What's what, Sorry, who was that? I guess I'll read. That was from Byron. So if you want to go down to, I think, the first chronological one 
uh, that is related to this was Joel's, Joel's yeah. Young Jedi Knight Shadow Academy one. question, yeah. passing the torch. So Joel, classic, classic Joel email. I appreciate you every time, Joel. Joel gets us, I think, an email for almost every book. I think so. Um, and he sent us one as well for Dark Saber, which we're going to do. But anyway, um, so I'm just going to read some, because he always sends a lot, so let's pick up some key parts here. Uh, I know a lot of friends of mine don't like the post-New Jedi Order universe for the fact that so many characters have such horrible fates. I think the worst has to be Master Ikrit. That's his name, right? The bunny? Ikrit. Uh, yeah, Anakin. Ikrit, yeah. The one that blows me... up to let Anakin and Tahiri off Yavin. Yeah. Well, blows. he gets shot. I Blows up is not really the correct adjective for what happened in the scene. He blows mm-hmm. up, but it. anyways, this is too... Yeah. So yeah. Joel's got an, an interesting point here. Um, lots of stuff, terrible stuff happens to these characters, but the legends also did a good job of kind of making these characters popular. However, it always, the expanded universe always relied on Luke, Leia, and Han to carry the stories, even when they're in their seventies, they never retired the characters. They never killed them off. He says, say what you will about the sequels and how it handled passing the torch. But I do like how, when we know, when we now go to post episode nine, the new characters will have to hold their own. And I agree with that. Um, especially when you read Fate of the Jedi, I, I do feel sometimes like having Han and Leia be a big part of it takes away from the story. Well, I didn't mind it as much with Fate of the Jedi. Like when looking, I agree in principle with, but with the application we got in Fate of the Jedi and uh, Legacy of the Force, the storylines that they were telling kind of made sense, and it still did have Jaina, Jason, and yeah. kind of the next generation as the forefront. And their relationship with their family was the important part. And then we mm-hmm. kind of got Crucible as a send-off for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, or not really a send-off, but it was kind of the completion of their arcs. Yeah. And it was going to be even more focused on like Jaina and all that yeah. going forward. But they obviously didn't go forward anymore. So we never got to see. Because there was, there was definitely a big thing going into, especially Bantam, where there was a, a fear that if you didn't use those characters, people wouldn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And... That was definitely still evident as you went through the Yuuzhan Vong War and the Del Rey books up to Crucible as kind of the last chronological book we had. Uh, but Crucible's weird, by the yeah. way. We were starting to get out of that, and who knows what that would have ended yeah. up looking like. Uh, but like the stories they're approving now would have been an indicator yeah. of how reliant they would have felt they needed to be because of the same publishing companies. Not mm-hmm. in terms of like specific content, but just like would they have felt comfortable focusing on characters that aren't Han, Luke, and Leia. And it seems like they would have, and it seems like that was the plan already. I think Luke would have stayed as a main character because he would have been the one kind of... Remember how, like, at the end of Fate of the Jedi, they make the new quest knights or whatever they're called to, Mm -hmm. like, hunt down... They're trying to find the the Mortis structure (coughs) and whatever else. So I think Luke would have always been involved in that because it is a very kind of Jedi thing. And I mean, Luke is old at this point, but he's not like that old like Han. Um, well, it's not necessarily that they'd be gone entirely, just that they'd show up, but they wouldn't necessarily be the same kind of focus that they were. Yeah. It's like Fate yeah. of the Jedi especially uh, is is Luke. Like, Yeah, and, and it has entire Han and Leia arcs yeah. as well. Yeah, so especially with like Alana, who of course goes with Han and Leia. Yeah. Um, I can imagine Han and Leia would be like just grandparents from hell. Like, obviously Han and Leia get the kids this weekend. Because... Um. <laughs> yeah, well, like I mean, maybe it's the situation where people are like terrible parents and then good grandparents is probably applicable. But a lot of the times that comes from like people realizing they've been terrible parents as well. So yeah. I don't think Han and Leia ever considered themselves terrible parents. No, actually, no. They they explicitly talk about that in New Jedi Order. Yeah. So maybe they would have. Considered yeah. not being shit to Alana, and Emperor Fell the Second. Emperor Fell the Second. I forget at this point. Um, is Leia still Chief of State? In because it this says one? she is in the in the book, but like I, I can't remember how the transfer of power goes. Like I know she takes a like sabbatical during um, the Thrawn duology, and then she's Chief of State again, right? And then at some point, Borsk Falia. Yeah, I think she retires wins. like a year or two after this. And Borsk hasn't been in power super duper long when the Yuuzhan Vong War starts. Right. I don't think it's like immediate, but uh, 
yeah, there's, I think this is still within her accepted tenure. Okay. I mean, she served for, you know, a decent amount of time, especially as like first head of state for a new government. Well, first real head of state. Um, yeah. Well, was, there's a, there's kind of a weird uh, sentiment that Gaverson has. We don't know how representative it is of how it's seen in the New Republic generally, but that like the chief of state position is naturally Leia's job with mm-hmm. very democratic of them. Uh, but yeah, I was like, and there's kind of the same feeling with Mon Mothma. Yeah. Until in Jedi Academy, uh, yeah. until Leia becomes kind of the next, the next person. Yeah, to have that. We basically just get Mon Mothma saying, no, it's your turn to be chief of state. No, Fuck let's have an election. Process. Maybe. Do we actually get the election? I can't remember. Uh, I think the only time we get an in-depth election coverage is in, uh, is it Unifying Force? It's one of the New Jedi Order books when Kalo Mass becomes. Oh, yeah, it's when, not, it's when, definitely uh, not Unifying Force. Steve, when Steve Martin. Yes, when Steve Martin does it. On on Mon Cala, I remember specifically, because there's like yeah. a little submarine part. <laughs> Wait, is that in Star by Star? Like, is that the B-plot um, of that book? Where like No, because isn't the B-plot Coruscant falling? <laughs> right. No, yeah. hold on. I'm, I'm just at Star by Star now. I really need to finish that reread. But yeah. uh but yeah, that's that's the most in depth we get about their process. Yeah. yeah. But and uh Leia yeah. never becomes chief of state in the new canon because she kind of almost goes for it and then it covers that in bloodlines, which is a pretty good book. The whole Vader uh, revelation is a much bigger thing in canon than in Legends. As it probably would be. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then especially when uh, a lot of the galaxy is like, "Hey, we maybe want to stop being at war for the first time in sixty years," and Leia's like, mm-hmm. "Let's actually go invade those fuckers." <laughs> <laughs> no, we're doing it. Let's make another fleet. <laughs> I I kind of like uh, that part of what happens, where like Leia just keeps being the resistance fighter, and yeah, even if it doesn't end up being the most popular thing for her to do mm-hmm. in the galaxy. Uh, yeah. But our next email, thank you for that, Joel, comes from Keaton. Uh, sorry, the dog is going to meet my mic yep. for a second. Keaton says, hey guys, love the show, been listening from the start. My question is, do you think Thrawn would have used the SSD Reaper had the PA offered it to Thrawn, assuming, of course, the PA lent him the vessel fully crewed? Uh, I think he would have used it if it was available. Like, I don't think, it's the kind of thing where I don't think Thrawn would build his own SSDs, but if he has them he has and they're it, available and they're crude, them. then he's not going to go out of his way to. Let's be honest. We know what Thrawn would do. He would use it as a diversion for yeah. something else. So that's like pretty much all of what like the Last Command is. It's like various feints and like whatever else. So like or like fake feints. So it's like oh, it's just a super star destroyer. Clearly Thrawn wouldn't do that, and then he would actually just like destroy a planet or something. Mm-hmm. So he would have used it. I don't think he'd build it, but. Yeah, I agree. And I, I don't know if he would staff it in favor of, like, I don't know if he would sacrifice other ships to staff it either. But if he's getting the men and the ship, I mean, he's, he'd for sure do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Even just, like, parking it somewhere and being like, hey, don't attack this place. That would... Yeah. Or, yeah. I know you're going to attack this place, so here's the thing you shouldn't attack, which you're going to attack, so I'm going to attack this thing while you're attacking that thing. That mm-hmm. kind of thing. But yeah, uh, yeah so mobile, thank you. Mobile Keaton. cloning facility. That's what I think you'd do use it for. Mm. Mobile cloning facility. Ter Lusankia style. Yep. Uh that'd, that'd do you cool. want to go for the next one here? Yeah. Actually, sorry, I, I had my thing closed because I was muting my mic and I was in my audio. Can you read the next one? I'll All read right. one after that. Uh we have Kenan's question. How do you guys love the show? It's great to be able to listen to two Star Wars nerds talk about Star Wars in doses that are way longer than necessary. Okay, well, depends on the episode. Uh, <laughs> praise aside, my question for you isn't related to any book in particular, but rather a multitude of them. You guys mention how often how creepy and borderline incestuous, not borderline <laughs> incestuous, let's be clear on this, it is directly the definition of incestuous. Luke's feelings for Leia are, totally agree, nasty. So my question is this. If you guys were tasked yeah. with the one-to-one retelling of the original trilogy, be it in a book, movie, graphic novel form, how would you handle the relationship between Leia and Luke? Would you change the kiss mm. scene on the Death Star? Would you change the dialogue of Ewok Village to acknowledge those awkward moments? 
Would he leave everything alone? Or would you go big and bold and retcon them to not even be related? Feel free to go off on a tangent. I love hearing you guys spitball on how you would have handled things. Do you want to go first here? Yeah, the the whole dynamic between Han and Leia or Han and Luke, and with both of them being like into Leia, is a pretty important part of A New Hope. So, and I I enjoy that too. Like especially the scene where they've escaped the Death Star, and Han's like, "You don't think she'd go for a scoundrel like me, do you?" And Luke's like, "No, she wouldn't." And and uh, Han's basically just laughing to himself because Luke's an incel. Um, like, I enjoy that part of episode four or Star Wars. I wouldn't want to change that. Y- you can, even the kiss in episode five, it's fun. That's one that I'd feel a bit more comfortable removing, but just generally, it never gets too weird. Um, like, it's always pretty innocent. They never have really, like, lust or real kind of rom- true romantic love for each other so yeah it's okay i mean i feel like you can go either direction with it if you take in the context of like the expanded universe then the thing that changes the least is just removing luke's weird crush on her or at least some of the expressions of it and that ends up being fine yeah. uh or if you're just talking about the the um the movies themselves if you just take it as original trilogy yeah. then you can just have them not be related and it doesn't actually change anything. It doesn't matter. I enjoy it though still. I like I like the whole But if you're if you're sister, going to feel so like you, you need would, to have a uh, a romantic interest for Luke, then mm-hmm. don't have them be related. If you feel like you need to have them be related, don't have the romantic subplot. Cuz it basic it almost feels when you get to that point in uh where they say, oh, no, there is another, and it's his sister. Like, we, it doesn't, it just feels like another thing of like, oh, actually turns out everyone's related, where you don't kind of, you don't really need that. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I just, I really like the moments that kind of, if you remove one of those key aspects, you can't really get the moments. Like, I like when Vader's probing Luke's mind and, you know, the whole twin sister thing. And Luke strikes at him with rage. I like that moment. I like the dynamic from A New Hope that I was talking about earlier. So if you go one way and remove it, then you got to sacrifice one of those moments. I I don't think you have to. I think you can put in other stuff that accomplishes the same thing if you go either direction there. Maybe. Because, like, you can also just introduce another character. Like, you have four people instead of three. If you want to split it into like mm. Luke's non-reciprocated love interest and Luke's sister or yeah. love trial between Han, Luke, and Leia, and then there's another person who is Luke's sister. Like, There's a few ways you could go about it, and obviously other stuff would change as you go, but mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know, I find it kind of uncomfortable watching. Uh, it is weird. Because like, it... It clearly wasn't like George was writing those scenes thinking, oh, they're going to turn out related. But then it happens and it's like, okay. I don't know what he was thinking in Empire Strikes Back because he there's the whole, but there is another scene, which I guess was referring to Leia. I don't know what his original intention was, but that movie also has the weird kiss. The kiss on the Death Star is not that weird. It's it's a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, it's, that's fine. It's, but Luke's crush leading up to it where he's like, where'd she go? It's yeah. weird. But yeah. uh, And it also, like, who knows what came from George, what came from Lee, what came from Kasdan. What came from Carrie Fisher? Because <laughs> she was kind of a little script doctor herself. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, what do you think? Do you think George knew in episode five what was going on? In episode five, he might have decided that was the direction he wanted to go there. But in episode, like, you could just introduce his sister as another character later on. Yeah. And then, like, you could keep all that. And she shows up in Empire or she shows up in, like, maybe, like, Luke finds out Vader's his father and then finds that there's been this character out there who knew they were Vader's daughter, who was also getting trained, or uh, mm-hmm. she gets captured by the Empire, or Vader doesn't. Like, there's a couple ways you can do that. It obviously would change some stuff, mm-hmm. but it's it's weird Joel, that that's the direction yeah. they go. Joel in the chat does have a good point, and I kind of remember hearing about this, that there was going to be, and Joel just posted the other thing I was about to say, um, because episode six was initially going to lead into another trilogy, so... Yeah. 
the idea of Luke having a sister was probably always a thing or a sibling, but it may have been that there just wasn't enough time or it wasn't going to wrap up nicely. So they end up making the sister character and the Leia character into one. Yeah. Or like maybe Chewbacca is his sister. That could have been I mean, fun. Could have been. I would have enjoyed that. Hmm. Anyway, hey. um, thank you very much. That was a very interesting question. I think the last one we have is from David who asks, do we have any plans to cover the Republic Commando series in the future? And I will say we've got plans to cover basically every Star Wars book. Um, what you guys should be asking is, do we have any immediate plans to cover it or is it high on our priority? I wouldn't say Republic Commando is super high on our priority, but I can see us kind of slotting those in on off weeks at some point. Yeah. Um, Usually the way it works is we have like an idea of what the immediate thing we're doing is and then yeah. maybe what like the next thing we want to do is. So we're rarely super planned out beyond a month or maybe two because yeah. it'll it really does depend on what we end up deciding we want to do, uh, like what yeah. we feel like at the moment. Because we've, we've tried to do before where we make longer term plans for what specifically we're going to do. And we almost never end up following those because we just like change our mind of what interests us. Uh, so generally we're kind of heading chronologically and yeah. then on our like we're, we're kind of doing it where our main kind of read through is going chronologically every off week and then uh or every week every second week and then we've got off weeks where sometimes we'll do something else it's often something shorter mm -hmm. so i could see republic commando maybe being an off week book those books aren't shorter but they're pretty uh like you know they're, they're fun so we'll see uh i'm not sure yet but those books are i've, I've read them before I like the, I think the Order 66 one is probably my favorite. Um, and then he also asks about Thrawn's Revenge, about the new update. His boarding shells are a lot of fun. Uh, and he asks, do you know when that's coming out? And I'm going to guess that's just whenever it's ready. That is correct. We don't have a set date yet, but we, the, over the last couple of days, I've kind of finalized what the specific plans are for what we need to get done for the release. So we mm -hmm. are heading towards it being a thing. Oh, sweet. I didn't know. I didn't know you guys were there yet. That's good. Lots but, of new models I've seen. They look great. Yep. There's been just a shit ton of models done. Pretty much the entire New Republic is, has been redone, right? Entire um, New Republic, entire Empire of the Hand, pretty much all in the space. Dreadnought. Of, yeah. Like, yeah, you even just have, SSDs, like, there's the Executor, the Vengeance, yeah. the Bellator, the Vi or the Viscount was redone last release, but there's been like three Mandator. or four other Sovereigns yeah. being redone, Mandators are being done, like who the sovereigns being redone? Yeah. Do you have a design you're going off of, like a basic uh, design? Farshot has done a few, a bit on it already, uh, okay. but like, there, a huge amount of the mod has been redone in the last year. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I am excited. So you say you say the the new mandators will be in the the new mod that, or the new version. That's what I'm excited. Uh, about. yeah, the mandators will be in the next release of Fall of the Republic. The mandator three may or may not be ready by the time we do uh Thrawn's revenge 3.0 because we're doing one and two we're focusing on that and then like those fit for fall of the republic but the three would be what we use in a couple places in uh in Thrawn's revenge we don't currently plan to use the one or two anywhere in there but we'll see what ends up happening but yeah. uh but yeah uh, they, they are cool i saw i saw them they're cool yeah they're pretty darn epic yeah, I feel, I feel like it'd be a shame if you couldn't get them all together in a game, but I I also get where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that that does it for me. Anything you want to throw nope. in? Just uh, Corey and I have been streaming lots of Star Wars Squadrons, which I'm surprised we didn't talk about more at the beginning of the episode. Uh, this is our first Squadron. Is it, or no, I think Squadrons came out before our last No, it episode, was maybe. Thursday that the episode was, so... Oh, we recorded yeah. it right before you went off to stream that and before right. we found out the uh, release time was six hours later for me than I thought, or four hours later than I thought. Yeah, so you've done a full review, right? It was You did campaign and multiplayer, right? Uh, I hadn't done most of the campaign and I still haven't done most of the campaign. It wasn't really a full review. I did, did basically a guide on like whether or not people should buy it. I didn't really want to uh, structure okay. it as a review. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, have Ghost you beat Fish the campaign off stream? No. I, okay. Because I, I recorded the first five episodes. I'm doing it all in VR, so I'm trying to not make myself sick. Uh, but like, it's been awesome so far, but I, I don't want to yeah. throw up in my... I actually yeah. haven't been too bad with the VR stuff. 
But like, I basically just wanted to give my take on like the multiplayer is really fun. The campaign is really fun. But uh, yeah. if you are looking for something that is more structured towards single player or is more like breadth of content, more like X-Men mm-hmm. Alliance, then you're probably not going to want the game. Yeah. But if you're looking for like a really tight experience that is more competitive oriented, then Squadrons mm-hmm. is probably something you'll enjoy. Like I've been loving yep. playing it, but I'm also not going to try to be like, oh, this is. It's not for everybody. everybody. And it's, it's very competitive as well. Um so if you're, you know, it's it's fun though. It's fun. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll do a more detail once you finish the campaign. We can talk about that more in depth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I think we we have talked about in the past doing like full episodes on specific games as kind of some of the off week uh, mm-hmm. episodes between uh, between books. Those are what yeah. those are called that we cover on this podcast, right? Books. Yeah. Because uh, right now those are going to be the right now we're just going through the Young Jedi Knights books until we get to the point that you take your two weeks off or whatever yeah. it ends up being. And then we're going to come back. We're still going to finish off the rest of the Young Jedi Knights alternating with the uh, with the main novels or the longer novels. And mm-hmm. then after that. For those off weeks, we're either going to do like comics or we'll do games, we'll do TV stuff. Mandalorian, we're going to be covering probably yeah. one of the first episodes you're back will end up being a Mandalorian episode because uh, the first episode should be back up by then at least, I assume. It's hard to know without the exact timeline, but that's yeah. probably what's going to happen. Yeah. I, I like the idea of having a, an episode a week, but without having to drastically increase the amount I've got to read. Yeah. Um, because especially if we're reading big ass books every week, it can be mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, it'll probably fluctuate based on like what the specific books are, because like if we did two weeks of like Dark Saber and then the Crystal Star, yeah. I'd shoot myself. Yeah. Yes. But and I would. I'd be right there with you. <laughs> All right. That said, we are going to be streaming Fall Guys in about thirteen minutes uh, mm-hmm. over on X Two and Corey loses. We're checking out the season two update there. So if you want to come and watch us get some crowns or yell at each other for not getting crowns. Uh, that's going to be an option. Ghostfish, you were asking about the Mandator. I don't think we so far haven't determined to make it a standalone structure, but I'll cover that more on mod-related stuff. Uh, but I mean, even when it was just at Kuat, it could still move. It's not very fast. Yeah, but like for balance reasons, it's something we're considering where you like start it oh. as a defensive structure, then when you make it the two, it upgrades, and then you can use it as a regular unit. Uh, but uh, that, that was... kind of makes sense, actually, because yeah. I'm, it, especially if you could have it move around the map but not jump, because yeah. I think... Might not have a hyper anyway. Because then it's also something where it's uh, it discourages people attacking uh, Kuat immediately because we have the static defense fleets in Fall of the Republic. So it makes sense mm-hmm. of having it be like a thing that's at Kuat discourages attacking Kuat. It's present when it's supposed to be present, but then it gives you the option of making it movable. But it, we haven't 100% decided on how we're going to handle that. But, also, the best or Planet of Twilight. Yeah, I, I keep saying Crystal Star for that. I, oh, I did that like every single time when we were talking about Children of the Jedi. I don't know why I keep doing that, but uh, I keep doing that. But uh, I, it was me interrupting you. I think is what that was. No, I was just gonna say the best strategy early on in Empire War by far is just to get a massive fleet and steamroll too. So that kind of helps with that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I think that's all for me. Is that all for you, Corey? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, don't forget before you turn off your podcast player, go and leave us a nice review. Leave us five stars. If you think we're a five-star podcast, leave us less. If you think we are less, fewer. Hopefully, actually, no, I guess it is less because you can get point like a decimal place of a star. So never mind. How about you, how about, 